This video covers all user settings in Clo. This will help you set up your device and Clo to your liking. Clo user settings are accessed under the settings menu at the top of the screen. The first section, graphic options, refers to the visual settings in your 3D window. This used to have a lot more options if you're using an older version of Clo, but as of 5.1, those options are either now incorporated into other areas of the software or are no longer editable by the user. Use DBOs, or vertex buffer objects, correlates to the rendering speed. It is a faster way of rendering, but if your computer doesn't have the graphics card that can handle it, you may experience black flickering in the background of your 3D window while working, or other issues with rendering. If this is the case, you should uncheck this box. You'll notice I get a pop-up telling me to restart the program. This will happen with certain settings throughout user settings. This just means that the change won't go into effect until you close and reopen CLO. But you can do that at any time after making the change, you don't have to do it immediately. Anti-aliasing is common with gaming. The number corresponds to speed and the smoothing of curves and edges. If your screen doesn't have a high enough resolution to process the graphics, you get jagged edges and anti-aliasing will smooth it out. The default is 16. There should be no need to adjust this unless you're seeing an issue with graphics in your 3D window. View controls refers to your mouse navigation setup and your point of view in the 3D window. The default on a PC is a regular mouse. If your mouse does not have a scroll wheel, the default zoom will be the left mouse button and alt. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, your scroll wheel will be your zoom by default. On a Mac, the default will be set to magic mouse. The other settings allow you to match your navigation settings to other 3D programs. Tablet is the setting used for a Wacom tablet or a laptop trackpad. Clo is not yet compatible with a touchscreen. User preset at the top will pop up if any of the drop-down options are customized. You can refer to Foundations Lesson 4 for an in-depth look at navigation. Axis Constraint Key refers to the key that is held when you want to lock yourself into 45 and 90 degree angles. This might be locking your axis of rotation in the 3D window, or used when pattern editing, among other things. By default, the key for this is Shift. You can choose different keys from the drop-down menu. Smart panning allows you to pan while doing other things without interrupting that action, for example, while sewing in 2D. I find this nearly essential for Clo workflow, so I don't recommend unchecking this box. Autofocus means that if you click on something, it becomes your central point of rotation in 3D. If this is unchecked, the center is always the same, 0, 0, 0, where your avatar loads. The option below it will revert back to center as the point of rotation once everything is deselected. If unchecked, you'll need to hit the 2 key to bring your point of rotation back to center. The video on navigation and selection covers this in greater detail. These are the default settings for your viewpoint in the 3D window. If changed, you will see your 3D eye level moves up or down, or tilts forward or backward. This number will change the distance from your avatar and garment when using the default viewpoints. The shortcuts menu allows you to customize keyboard shortcuts. In order to do this, select the shortcut and you can simply delete it, or if you click on the shortcut itself, you just need to type in the key that you want the shortcut to be. If you want it to be a combination of keys, you need to press them both at the same time. The reset button will reset the shortcut to the default. Please know, Clo will not allow you to set shortcuts that are already in use, so you'll need to remove it from where it exists by default before adding it somewhere else. Down here at the bottom, you'll notice a different shortcut for the QWE gizmo when adding pins. That's because the W shortcut has its own function with that gizmo. For more on this, skip ahead to the 3D settings section of this video. The user interface tab firstly allows you to customize your units of measure within the software. Here you can check this box to use line as the units for button width. If you don't use line, button width will default to your chosen unit of measure. Here you can select the units for thread thickness. These are settings that won't go into effect until Clo is closed and reopened again. 
Here you can change the placement of your toolbars in the 3D and 2D windows. For small laptop screens, I recommend putting the 3D toolbar on the left and the 2D on the right. This box determines whether the learning links pop up when you hover over a tool in the toolbar. These links take you to our website and show either a video or written description of the tool. Here you can change the font used within the program. You can check this box if you're using a 4K monitor or other external monitor with a high resolution display and the scale of the program seems incorrect. Try automatically scaling first, but if you're not happy with it, you can adjust the different screen size options. Now let's look at the 3D tab. Here you can adjust whether the default mesh is triangular or quad, meaning rectangular. You may know already, but in 3D software, everything is made of mesh. In Clo, by default, we use triangular mesh as it's optimal for getting the soft drape of fabrics and the curves of the human body. You can change the type of mesh on an individual pattern piece in the property editor, but if you change it here, it will change your default for creating any patterns. Under Arrangement, you can change the default arrangement setting of your pattern pieces from curved to flat. By default, when using arrangement points, the pattern pieces will curve around the avatar. You can also change this on individual pieces in the property editor if you don't need to change it for everything. You can see more on this in the avatar and arrangement video. Sync fold arrangement makes sure that when something is folded using the fold arrangement tool in 3D, the fold angle is adjusted accordingly in the property editor. For more information on fold angles, refer to the garment details video on pleats and folds. By default, the gizmo is a unified gizmo that allows you to select, move, and rotate all at once. If you select divided gizmo, you'll need to hold the Q key to select, the W key to move, and the E key to rotate. Remember, if you select this gizmo, the keyboard shortcut for adding an individual pin will have to change. In the 2D menu, you can adjust the default particle distance, which is set to 20 millimeters. For more information on particle distance, watch the Foundations Lesson 7 video. Checking this box means that when you cut two patterns apart in the 2D window, they will automatically shift to put a small space between them. If unchecked, they will stay touching where they are cut. These two options mean that either your pattern notches will visually get bigger as you zoom out in order to see them from far away, or they will stay the same size and be to scale no matter how you zoom. Now I'm in Other Settings. Under Modular Configurator, this setting when checked on will allow you to change seamlessly between blocks when the naming convention has been set up to do so, like going from a single to a double-breasted jacket using the same sleeves. When unchecked, switching from one block to another will require you to start over. This option below will maintain your fabrics between blocks if you've already set those. These settings are for connecting directly from Clo to a plotter, and they'll depend on the plotter you're using, so I won't go into great detail about them. Default Files shows the file location where things are automatically saved or pulled from. You can adjust the file path by clicking the folder icon, and you can reset back to the default folder by clicking the arrow. Here you can adjust the time interval that Clo auto saves. By default, it's set to save every three minutes. You can also reference the file path in case you didn't get the pop-up to open the autosave file in Clo and you want to search for it on your computer. If you have or create your own plugin for Clo, you can access it here through the plugin menu by clicking the plus sign. To delete a plugin, you can click the trash can icon. Lastly, the Closet tab allows you to link your Closet URL automatically from Clo. This used to allow you to pre-log into your Closet account so that when uploading or rendering directly out of Clo, it would go straight to your account. This created issues with company Closet accounts and now takes you directly to the login screen instead. If your company has its own Closet URL, you can enter that here instead of the Closet.com URL. If you're not familiar with Closet, or don't have an account yet, please watch the following video to learn about Closet and how to create your own free account. 
You'll need to do so in order to use any of the practice files in the rest of the tutorial videos.